Think about the last time that you went to the cinema. Now, it may have been a while, but think about the last time that you went to a cinema to see a movie or even on another platform to see a play. But think about your experience, what we might call the cinematic experience. From the minute that you opened the door to the cinema, your cinematic experience began. The second that door opened, what was the first thing that you probably experienced? The smell of that buttery popcorn, right? That probably propelled you to go over to the counter and buy some of that wonderful buttery popcorn. And undoubtedly, you probably also realized, ah, I need to quench my thirst and buy some bubbly soda. And I'm sure that the person that was saying there also offered you the combo deal so that you get some sweet candy as well. So at that point, now you have your buttery popcorn, you have your bubbly soda, and you also have your sweet candy. You have multiple substances to help you in your cinematic escape. And that escape is something that we all experience when we go to the cinema. Regardless of whether our life is good or bad, at that moment or in its entirety, we are escaping our lives. We are going into another realm, another world, in the cinematic escape. Now think about that same realm, perhaps in substance use disorder or addiction. Across our country and across our globe, many people are utilizing multiple substances. It's really never just one substance anymore. Just like the popcorn, the soda, and the candy, people will utilize heroin, meth, ecstasy, you name it. It's almost always multiple substances, just like your last experience in the cinema. Now, on the other side of the coin within pain management, whenever we are successful with our patients, it's typically because we're using multiple treatments. And not just medications, but everything else as well. Active, psychological, everything all put together. It always involves multiple things within that experience, just like in your cinematic experience. So think about your overall experience and how you were going away from your world the last time you had a cinematic experience. What actually goes into creating that for all of us? Well, that brings us to that idea of mise-en-scene. That is everything that we experience, everything that every sense of ours has to take us away into this other world, into this other story. Every cinematic experience is another story to take us away. So the things that go into mise-en-scene, the first thing, of course, is going to be the setting. So in this pain and addiction realm, what is our setting? Our setting is right here in America. We lead the globe in drug overdose deaths by leaps and bounds when you look at a percentage of the population. That's why the setting is right here in America. As far as the decor, anytime, any place, all across our country, literally in this room or wherever you're listening from, anytime, any place, these things can affect someone. Next up within mise-en-scene, we'd have acting. Acting is the art of taking us away getting us away from our lives in that moment, within that story, within that cinematic escape. Movement is something I'd like to take you into a little bit more on the healthcare side. One of the most widely known neurotransmitters in our bodies is dopamine. The movement within the scene is when dopamine increases. Dopamine increases whenever anything is better than anticipated. Better than anticipated, dopamine increases in our body. Beautiful sunrise like this morning. A funny social media post. A six pack, a hit of heroin. Dopamine will increase when that experience is better than anticipated. As far as the lighting for this story, for this cinematic escape, think of when we first experienced light as humans and on the opposite side of the spectrum as well. The lighting 
I would beg you to consider would be when the lights go out, actually. Across our country, an American dies of a drug overdose every seven minutes. Conversely, a baby is born dependent, not addicted to, dependent to opioids every 30 minutes. Both of those experiences involve lighting. Building off of that, I'd really want to drive, drive it home for everyone to remember that every seven minutes. So I'm going to take the liberty of using uh, one of the costumes you may know of with Agent 007, James Bond. Altered it a little bit here just to highlight the every seven minutes an American dies of a drug overdose. Perhaps it's easy to remember with Agent 007. Every one of those hearts signifies one of those heartbeats stopping every seven minutes. The props within a cinematic experience are what are vital to making all this happen, good or bad, making it happen. One of the props you might already be looking at would be the needle, often involved in substances being abused. Other things, uh, even a, a magnetron we might note as a microwave to take care of some pills, heating them up once they're shaved down with a petty egg or perhaps a lemon zester. Benjamins will be involved. Money, this stuff costs money. And the final thing that perhaps would be involved would be the dosage of whatever substance we're talking about. Because in the end, it's all about the dosage, baby. And we really need to think about that. I'm basically taking the, the liberty to paraphrase Paracelsus, the father of toxicology, uh, who said, sola dosis facet venenum. In other words, only the dose makes a poison. I am a pharmacist. We concentrate as healthcare providers on two main things when it comes to any medication, substance. It'd be how it works and how much. In other words, it's all about the dosage, baby. And think about that. We could apply this, this thought frame, this knowledge, to many of the, the endeavors that we have ta undertaken as a country, as a globe, a society overall, to combat this war on drugs. I'm sure you're familiar with Just Say No, K-N-O-W. Stories, cinematic experiences always enlighten us to new information. When you're thinking about Just Say K-N-O-W, we can apply that to many different substances. Think about ethyl alcohol, drinking alcohol, right from the beginning. It was legal, illegal, and legal again. Yet it never changed and it's chemical. Within healthcare, when we're talking about pain management, one of the things that we often do is compare prescription opioids to one another in the same way that you might be able to compare citrus fruit. Any of you might eat an orange at any point, but will you eat a lemon or a grapefruit? There's differences amongst these citrus fruit that we want to compare just like with pain medicines to see how can we best help our patients when it comes to the medications? Another substance that I'm sure would catch your ear would be cannabis. Talk about just say K-N-O-W with that. Words matter, spelling matters. Cannabis, marijuana, THC, CBD, weed, the list goes on. But what are we really talking about? The really big point here is that it really is all about just say no, K-N-O-W. And in the end, it really is, regardless of the substance, it's all about the dosage, baby. And we gotta think about how we actually, as a society, approach this as far as helping people, whether someone has pain or they have addiction. How are we actually helping people? Some strategies you might be uh, familiar with, there would be warnings of obviousness. Caution hot on a cup of coffee. That strategy will work in many accords, but not all. If you think about it in a completely different realm, if you have a, a doctor who wants to discuss blood pressure, very important for a particular patient, but that patient is most concerned with their lower back pain. If that doctor does not address that lower back pain, good luck with the blood pressure, even though there's really good intentions along the way. We have to know our audiences. We have to know what their stories are to be able to provide them information and help along the way. Other strategies include things like fear-mongering. 
I'm sure many of you are very familiar with or have heard of the 1987 egg ad. This is your brain, this is your brain on drugs. It's very much in the forefront. It's very in your face. It works for many people. But does it work for everyone? We need to know our audiences. We need to think about our strategies when it comes to this realm of pain and addiction. If you think about it, uh, think about having a, a five-year-old watch the movie uh, Friday the 13th, and there's a lake involved. After that movie, that five-year-old might never want to go to a lake again. Conversely, that five-year-old might want to go swimming or fishing at that lake tomorrow because we told them that they couldn't or shouldn't, and now they want it more. These strategies come to the forefront in, in, in the limelight. And here we are at the Creative Arts Center here in Morgantown, West Virginia at WVU. And what better place to think about the various cinematic escapes that are available for all of us. And we've all probably watched most of them. When it comes to the TV side of things, uh, there, there's been numerous different documentaries out there like Drugs Incorporated, Hamilton's Pharmacopeia. Right here in Wild and Wonderful West Virginia, we of course have Heroin and Recovery Boys. And across the globe, everyone is probably familiar with Breaking Bad, Narcos, Nurse Jackie, House MD, the list goes on and on. And when you enter the realm of movies, the list is even bigger. American Gangster, American Made, Blow, Dazed and Confused, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, French Connection, one and two, Pineapple Express, Reefer Madness, the first one and the second one, Scarface, Traffic, Train Spotting, Up in Smoke, even Lord of the Rings. In Lord of the Rings, it was all about the ring, the ring, this precious ring, the heroin, the cocaine, the meth, the precious heroin, cocaine, and meth. It was about addiction the entire time. Think about it. So how do we utilize these cinematic experiences to make a difference? We all have stories. We need to share our stories. Perhaps the most abundant resource that we have. We all have a story. And within pain and addiction, there's countless sensationalized yet real stories that are out there. A lot of times uh, involving pain where someone's either after an operation or perhaps a, an auto accident or even a high school or college sports injury and the end of the story has someone ending up utilizing heroin after having their pain treated. There's lots of different stories that are out there when it comes to pain and addiction. And if you think about the big picture with these stories, with pain, it's typically always negative. We know that. But with addiction, it's not always. A CEO can have addiction. It's a different lifestyle. A drug cartel leader can have addiction. And think about the thrill of the minute lifestyle of a cartel leader. It's not always negative. And these stories that we have that are out there that help people there's numerous recovery stories when talking about living with addiction. Recovery stories help people every day, unlike what we had just talked about. Right here on this campus, we actually had one of the gentlemen from that uh, TV show that I mentioned earlier, Recovery Boys. We had Ryan from Recovery Boys come to this campus. He stood in front of hundreds of healthcare students and told his story. On that evening, you could hear a pin drop in that audience. And we all, present self included, more, learned more in that evening than I could teach in an entire year. Stories can make a difference. We all have stories. And in the end, we have to remember that. We, we need to realize that we need to not become a statistic. We need to make sure that someone else is not becoming a statistic, and we can help them with our stories. But we need to think about it in the frame of just like being on an airplane, what's one of the first things they tell you? Put your mask on first before you help someone else. We need to make sure that our stories are concrete and put together in order to help others. Our stories are a cinematic experience for someone else to help them, whether they're dealing with pain, addiction, or even something else. We will make countless decisions throughout our whole life, molding and molding and molding our stories over and over again hopefully in order to help others. So the final thing that I would ask of you is, what will your story become?